Okay, so this video is about how to convert a sample into MIDI, which is basically giving you an opportunity to use other songs to borrow maybe chord progressions and different things that they use. You can also do this with drums and take the, the MIDI from the drums. Um, this is in Ableton. I find it the easiest. I'm sure you can do it in other things, but I'm just going to do it in Ableton because that's the way, that's the program I use to do it. So what I did was I dragged one of my own sampled songs <laughs> onto the track. And at the beginning of the song, I know for a fact there's chords. So that's what we're gonna take. The rest of it I'm not gonna worry so much for because it's a congested portion where the whole track is playing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of all of this, right? And just keep what I'm gonna actually do. I'm not even gonna keep this, I'm gonna get rid of. So you see I've narrowed it down. I'm gonna try to zoom in for you here. I don't want to move the camera because my thing is broken, so it might. So I'll move the I'll move this down so you can see it more center. Okay, so there it is. That's the piece. You can go in and look, and you'll see. Now this beat was played, I believe, in one twenty, so it should be spot on. It's a little off. That's okay should be good enough to get what we need off of it, which is the chords. All right, so you can do this with anything. You could take, you can actually do it with drums. If you find a drum sample and you wanna borrow the MIDI from it, you can do that. And the simple way to do it is drag it onto a track as I have here, this is an audio track. You don't even need to create a MIDI track, it will do it for you. And if you right click on the this bar that's right here, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, you'll see slice to new MIDI track, or you can convert to a harmony track, a melody, new MIDI, or a drum. So there's your options. I'm just gonna do MIDI. I'm not gonna do harmony. To be honest with you, I don't, I know melody what a melody is, that's pretty obvious, but I'm not sure on the harmony what they mean by that. Um, and I've never used it. You could honestly just go slice to new MIDI track and be fine. Um, but if there's a bunch of parts in here that you're slicing, then it could be, yeah, you could have some other maybe melody pieces that you don't want. You would have to sit there and figure them out. Um, so let's just do slice to new MIDI. Then it's going to ask you if you want to create one slice per transient. Do you want to use warp, warp markers? Do you want to do it to the bar? I'm just going to leave that alone leave it on transient. And then you have all these options, which is slicing preset. So you have, you know, build in um, carbonized rack, all this stuff. I be honest with you, I don't know what none of it means right now. I haven't really messed with it. But the key is preserve the warp timing. Yes, preserve the warp timing. We'll leave that on. Um, this is for transit. So let's do this. And you'll see it creates it right below it. Here's the track. So this is like the ability to sample. It's slicing it for you. So let's say you wanted to slice the sample up. That's a way to do it. We're not going to do that, though. This is not what I want. We're going to go harmony. I believe harmony is actually probably more likely your chords, which is what we want. So we'll just do that. Now, you see, I didn't have to answer all those questions, right? Because there it is. So now if you go into here, these are supposedly the chords that you played. So let's test this out to see how well it did. All right. We're just going to mute. We're actually going to mute this track and we're going to add to this MIDI track a plugin, a piano plugin of some sort. So let's grab one from up in here. We'll do Spitfire Audio and we'll do the Grand Okay, and then we'll throw in, I think I made a preset here. Let's do that. All right, there we go. So let's see how this sounds now.
All right, let's loop that just to see if it did good on the loop. So we'll, so to loop it, I'll just click that and hit Command L. All right. So it's missing that first note because you can see all these notes are a little over. So to make this work, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I could just do Command A and select all. I'm just gonna go Command U. Now the timing will be a little different and it's missing a chord up here or a note up here. And since I know that it goes there, I'm gonna go duplicate. I actually, I didn't wanna do that, I apologize. Undo that. I am going to Command C. Where did it put it? I think it put it here, right? Nope. Didn't do what I asked it to do. Look at this thing. Just do that, there we go. And then we'll take this one up here. And then we'll just to make sure they're on, we'll command U, that'll quantize it. And I'm only doing that for this purpose, just to show you. So here's the, the chords. Command U. Okay, now they're all quantized. So there you have it, it works. That's the chords, they were simple chords. It, it Honestly, I think it probably left off a note here, to be honest with you. I haven't played this song in so long, I'd have to go back and look and see exactly what I played. But you get the point, it's pretty close. So it's a good feature if you wanna figure out chords. Now, there is another way to do this, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. I'm not gonna pull the iPad uh, for this, because it would, yeah, I'm just not gonna do it, okay? I'm not pulling the iPad out and trying to switch. It'll be, it's a process. And I'm trying to make this video under 10 minutes if possible. Okay, so the second way to do it would be using Scalar. So I have Scalar set here. I'll pull it up. And we are going to pick the audio. I'm trying to find space in here and I got my camera zoomed in. That's why, <laughs> let me zoom back out so you can see this. So you see that I have Scalar. Now, one thing that's cool about Scalar, you've probably seen this before, I'm gonna turn this off one, is that you can record in, right? Set the record and then play something and then it'll, let's play, uh, we'll mute this MIDI track and just play there. So you won't pick it up like that. So there's a couple options. You can either bring, play the MIDI in by hand, you can bring in, audio record audio which is what we want to do click it and see if it plays it doesn't work right so the way we have to do on this particular scenario is drag in or bring in the audio file now i'm not going to do that that's one way to do it um i am going to see and i have not verified this i've really got that sample in a bad spot here let me see if i can just pull it so I can have both open, there we go, and you can see it still. All right, so I am going to open up Scalar again. Let's see if it'll let me drag in. It does, aha. So this is gonna replace the current detection. We'll say yes to that, and there you have it. So let me put the uh, piano back on. We'll just use a grand piano. So this is off, it's picking up chords that really don't exist, but <laughs> yeah, some of those chords are right, some of them are wrong. And that could be a challenge too, but that's another option. So the point of this all is, is that besides um, taking a sample from somebody's sound and creating an instrument and doing different things of that nature. If you just need the chords for a song, you can borrow the chords this way and get an idea of what they played. You can, I like to convert into, convert to MIDI personally a lot better. Um, Scalar is great. It does a good job sometimes on simple, simple songs. Um, but 
this right here, I mean, you just, you're pulling the MIDI straight off and it usually sounds, sounds closer to what I imagine that it was played. And mind you, I played this so long ago, so I don't remember exactly what I played. Um, it's been a while ago since I did this, but... It's pretty good. So there you have it. Two ways that you can get MIDI. You can either get the MIDI here, you can get it extract the drums in here. If you go over to iPad, I would say your best bet would be use, in my opinion, use Scalar. Scalar can do it on the iPad and it's gonna be a little more, um, it's probably the one of the most accurate things. Chord AI is really good too, at picking off chords if you need the chords. Um, so it's just different ways to create, to give you other opportunities to learn uh, what your favorite artists maybe are using in songs so that you can try to replicate and make your own uh, sounds that are close. Don't steal anybody's music or anything like that, but use utilize the techniques they have and the um, chord arrangements, see how they structure the song and their arrangements, and then use those things to build your own uh, creative music, songs, etc., etc. That's it for this video. I said I was going to give it under 10, but obviously, see, I'm sitting at 1130. It's just easier for me to record on record in uh, Ableton for you to see it. If I need the iPad, I will do the iPad. Um, but I think most of you can translate what I've shown you into the iPad. And uh, if somebody really needs it, let me know in the comments. And then I'll try to, if I have extra time, I'll try to put together a video for that. All right. That's it. 12 minutes. Good night.